Hello viewers, SuperGT here. So, we finally come back to Lemons, aka Le Mans, but it's properly pronounced as Lemons, obviously. Now the McLaren F1 GTR, it's not really a surprise to see that that car is the quickest around the mighty Lemons circuit. So, I thought I'd try a challenge of trying to beat the McLaren F1 GTR in a few different cars. Now the best thing to do to beat the fastest car around any certain track is to drive the fastest car yourself. So I'm going to do that first off here. And the crucial thing around Le Mans, uh, you may have seen the Tokyo video recently, the uh, slipstreaming festival. But this track is very much a slipstream festival as well. You have very long and a very high amount of straights which makes the slipstream extremely potent and therefore as the person in the lead here I do ideally want to get away from the car behind. Now the magic number normally is about eight tenths of a second so I'm just trying to get away by eight tenths of a second as we come through Tour Rouge onto the back straight and I am indeed more than eight tenths ahead so he's not actually going to be slipstreaming me down this straight uh, the guy behind in the Mustang. So that was pretty much that race. This race is just a really quick recap as I managed to win by 2.2 seconds as we come over the line. And it was McLaren that finished second and it was mostly McLarens in the race. So one strategy to beat the McLaren is to be the McLaren. So we got that one out of the way. I thought I'd try some different cars and the Mustang seemed like a decent shout for this race. So we're going to give it, a, give it a try here. Let's see if we can do it. So a McLaren in the lead, a Mustang directly behind, and then a, a McLaren behind them in fourth. So uh, the Ford, the Mustang versus the McLaren, two versus two in the top four. Come into the first chicane, uh, the Dunlop chicane. You can take plenty of kerb here, as long as you've got two wheels on the blue and yellow kerb. Even if you go beyond it, you can you can do that and you won't get a penalty and again the crucial thing here is it's really important the slipstream get within the prime sucking zone which is eight tenths of a second coming into Tour Rouge crucial corner this got to get it dead right and not quite we both are going to get penalized for that as we both run slightly beyond the crucial red oh, sorry the uh, blue and yellow curb limit so both get handed 0.5, we actually got another penalty there for running extra wide. And you can see the difference in the slipstream here. I'm in the slipstream of the, of the McLaren and I'm only just gaining. It is so quick that McLaren. If I pull out, I just don't even get any speed at all. Into the first of the two chicanes on the Mulsan straight. We're both going to serve our penalties here. So there's, I think there's three penalty zones on this track. The first of which is here. So I only served 0.5, he served 1.5. That's going to be enough for me to take the lead for now in the Mustang. And looking at the leaderboard and actually looking behind, it is a McLaren now into second place. So why is the McLaren so hard to beat? What is so good about it around here? Well, I mean, the McLaren F1, the road car, we all know, one of the quickest cars. It used to be the quickest car in the world, 241 miles an hour plus 240 plus miles an hour the road car or sorry the race car is also very very potent in a straight line and it's basically the best car in a straight line and with so many straights um, it means it's a very strong car around this track and once again looking at the magic suck zone 0.8 seconds and he's within that he's half a second behind now the McLaren so the Italian who was in the lead down to third the British guy in the McLaren who was fourth now to second behind me and looking like he's going to go flying past into the lead so he's in my slipstream so he's got the benefit of a really quick car plus slipstream and there's not much I can do about that as he goes through around the outside as we head into Indianapolis goes a little bit wide is that going to give me an opening coming into Arnage I'm going to go for it on the brakes nicely hit the apex he goes a little bit wide actually as I go back uh, back up the inside. So this is a, a very tactical race this because of the slipstream and I don't want to be behind coming through the Porsche curves because this is um, where my car should be suited a little bit more to the, uh, than the McLaren 
So he's going to get, uh, get once again the slipstream. Going to go to the left hand side. Is he going to get enough of a run on the left? Not quite. He was momentarily ahead. But I can just sweep uh, into first place once again by having the inside line. So this, uh, the Porsche curve section, crucial really. If I can just nail this plus the four chicanes at the end of the lap, then I could hopefully get uh, again more than that 0.8 seconds ahead once we get uh, through Turk Rouge onto the back straight. So again, looking behind, he's still very close through the penalty zone into the four chicanes now, using plenty of the pit lane entry as uh, an extra way to get some extra tarmac on the way into the chicane. And coming onto the main straight, again, moving over to the right hand side just to really break the slipstream. He's going to follow me all the way. Gap 0.6. So I still need to gain maybe two temps or maybe a little bit more coming through the first sector of the lap before we get to the main straight or the back straight once again, the more sand straight. So again, looking at the, the lines here, plenty of kerb. You can go beyond the white line as long as you've got two on the blue and yellow, then you're good. Gap 0.9. I've obviously nailed that chicane. The McLaren is actually fairly planted. It's actually a it's actually got a lot of grip, more than I would have expected when I first drove it. Um, it's actually a fairly controllable car, um, but it just doesn't have a great steer, um, sort of turning circle, if you like. So at this point, 1.2, so I've actually gained pretty much half a second or more coming through that first sector, which means, quite crucially, he's not going to be in the slipstream. He is going to gain because his car is quicker uh, down the straight. He's gained probably about two temps. Um, I didn't take that too well. And at this point now, on the exit of that first chicane, you can see just how close he is. Not quite the 0.8, but he is going to come down. He will be in the slipstream by the end, or pretty much by halfway down the straight. So he is gaining already. 0.5, or just under 0.6 as we come in to the second chicane. And on the way through, is he going to still be in that 0.8 zone? Yes, he is. It's going to be 0.7, just over 0.7. And again, just trying to make a weird line we're going halfway off the track the dotted line on the edge of the track is the limit you can go half off as long as you keep two wheels on then you're okay i'm just trying to break the toe as much as possible where he's not quite doing enough at this point hard braking zone then into more sand we clip the apex nicely you can go beyond there beyond the curb uh, just don't touch the gravel obviously and he's done the same very nicely he's got through the more, he's got through the more sand corner very nice, he's going to repeat of the, of the previous lap. In fact, when you're 0.5 seconds behind, that's actually a, a really good kind of distance to be behind. You can get a really good slingshot with the slipstream, and that's exactly what's going to happen here. In fact, he's going to get ahead earlier than he did on the previous lap and tuck in completely ahead, and I don't really have a chance of a reply. So into, in, into Indianapolis, and he doesn't make a mistake as he did on the previous lap, so I can't really go for an instant reply into the right hand of Arnage. So again, just having to tuck into the slipstream as we then come up towards the Porsche curve. So can I, again, ideally get ahead into the Porsche curves because it's only the second lap and there's only two laps. So it's gonna get increasingly hard to get any passes done because the Porsche curves are very difficult to overtake around. So he's gonna cover, he's not, in fact, he's not really gonna cover. I don't think he needed to as I wasn't quite there to go for the move. All I can do now is really just pressure him into a mistake and just hope that he makes one. There's always, always the potential for a penalty if you can just force your opponent into a little mistake where he just runs a little bit wide. And going through this left-hander here, he does, he does run slightly wide. I think he might get a penalty for that as we come up to here. I don't think he is going to get one. But coming into the four chicanes, I'm going to alongside slightly later on the brakes. Very brave move using all of the kerb and I've retaken the lead with barely two corners left to go. And as we come up to the line, it's going to be a sensational victory. So somehow, absolutely stealing that race, I've been, I've, I've been a bit of a race thief, AKA Daniel Ricciardo. Let's have a look at this then. Coming up into the four chicanes. So I was kind of a little bit alongside, but really committed and late on the brakes, using all of the curb and more which was just about allowed and then into the final chicane I just about kept it in with the track limits and come across the line for the second victory next time around we're going to use the 4 GT now the 4 GT um, it was always uh, the sort of D 
de facto top end speed car before the McLaren came along. So we're up against the ancient pleb from India of all people. Funny, funky, funky little name that. Let's see if the ancient pleb can do battle with us in very much the same fashion that we had in that previous race. So full GT now. So the full GT is good in a straight line. It's still probably the second best car in a straight line. But the McLaren is just so good. It's, it's, it's just so hard to go past the McLaren because I noticed this when I was racing against the McLaren around bar first. But when you come down the, the, the uh, long straights, you might be in the slipstream, but it's still really hard to get past. Even with the slipstream, it's really difficult. So in terms of trying to just overtake the McLaren, it can be very difficult. So let's, let's take a look then at the slipstream. Is it going to be enough? So fully tucked in, and we're going to finally move out to the right-hand side. Over 170 miles an hour. A lot of uh, t a lot of Group Three cars top out at around about 170, but we're going 180 almost. And in fact, it's a, it's a dead heat between the two of us as I just touched 179 miles an hour. It's going to be uh, a move into the first into first position. But um, you saw how just how hard that was. I had the full benefit of slipstream. And only then I could still only just pull alongside and then just hope that the corner would come up before he could really get going again. So this time around you see just how much easier it is for that McLaren to tuck into my slipstream and easily go through. And he's going to be topping out at 180 presumably as we come up into the second chicane. I don't think he actually would have quite reached 180 but maybe down some of the longer straights. So then through the second chicane once again, just really tucking in. And this was really strange because I think he just kind of backed off a little bit. I just wasn't quite sure what was going on until all of a sudden he just appeared back in front of me again. So what kind of defensive technology he's employing now, I don't know. I mean, I'm quite familiar with a lot of defensive techniques, but this one is very new to me and it's actually quite worrying. The ancient pleb reviving some ancient defensive mechanisms which obviously us modern humans are very unaware of but uh, he takes the lead once again with his shady wizardry as uh, we must do battle once again coming up towards Indianapolis so again tucked into the slipstream if you want to do a drinking game slipstream and eight tenths of a second and you'll probably be paralytic by lap two of the first race I um, haven't done a drinking game in a while, probably because I've killed so many people with liver poisoning. But, um, you know, if, if you really want to get involved, then knock yourself out. So, through there, he makes a bit of a mistake, running a little bit wide, just trying to force around the outside. Not quite going to happen, I have to let him go back ahead. It was never really going to happen around the outside there. Again, let's tuck into the slipstream and see if we can go for a move into the Porsche curves. It doesn't look like we can quite do it. So at this point, I mean, it doesn't matter too much. As long as you, I can stick with him, then it's okay. Just stick in the slipstream now, should be all right. But the main thing I was thinking, like, like in the previous race, if I can get ahead into the Porsche curves and just nail the Porsche curves, you can always open up. There's always the possibility of opening up a second gap if you can just really nail it and your opponent doesn't nail it. So on this occasion, I can't, couldn't quite do that. All I can do is try to pressure him into a mistake. And I think there, that, that was a mistake. That definitely was beyond the line. And in the previous race, it was very close. I think the guy almost got a penalty. But this guy does get a penalty, 0.5. So the next penalty zone is just after the first chicane on the Mulsanne straight. So we're gonna have to wait until then for him to serve it. Ideally, by then, I'll be ahead because that'll give me an even bigger gap. It'll kind of give me a big swing in my favor. If I can just get ahead and then he's got to serve that penalty. It's sort of a double whammy for him if I can do that. But at the very least, I just need to be behind him in the slipstream when he serves that penalty. That's the main, that's the minimum requirement at this point if I want to succeed at winning this race. So again, just really pressuring him, pressuring him through this section. And not really any opportunities to go for a pass through here as um, it's pretty much just a one line section. And into Turret Rouge, you don't really want to overtake here. You're just going to lose so much time. You just really want to focus on getting a good exit onto the main straight, onto the back straight. I call it the main straight. But it basically is the main straight in terms of importance because of um, the overtaking opportunities. Once again, it's the slipstream, putting out to the right-hand side. If anything, I've done it too early. 
you need to be about half a second behind, as I said earlier, and then you can get a really good slingshot and go past. At this point, I had maybe two temps, and it wasn't enough of a gap. So I couldn't really get much of a slingshot past him. So he's going to keep the position around the outside into, into the chicane. And this is where the penalty zone is. So just on the exit here. So again, just tucking into the slipstream once more just to maximise uh, our speed. So we do go up into the lead. I'm going to try to break that toe as much as I can as that gap just comes over seven temps and it's going to go over eight temps uh, now. So he's out of the slipstream range at this point, which gives us a very good opportunity to win this race. He will presumably catch up on the run out of this chicane down towards the next corner. So I've still got to watch out. It's not going to be over yet. Absolutely isn't over yet. So on the exit, gap over a second. So I am out of the range. And as we come down towards uh, Mulsanne, he does catch up about a tenth and a half. It just shows you how quick that McLaren is. It really is an absolute missile through there on, on the straights. So again, the gap, about nine temps. He gained pretty much a tenth on, on that straight. I'm, I'm a sitting duck again down here. There's nothing I can do about him gaining. So the gap comes down by a couple more temps. Although he doesn't quite take that corner correctly, I don't think the gap goes back up. So just hovering around the upper limit of the, the slipstream kind of zone, 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.8 seconds or 8 temps. And at this point, it's really a matter of just not bottling it. So can I just bring it home for our third consecutive victory in three different cars, which I'm very pleased about if it could happen. Just trying to win just trying to win any race in the best car is often hard enough at the best times. But trying to do it in three different cars is um, is very difficult, especially up against the best car around the track. So through the Porsche curves for the final time just making sure uh, we don't make any silly decisions because the, the, the easy thing to do now would be to push too hard, try and get a fastest lap or something, just get a penalty. It's very easy to get a penalty. We saw him do it on the previous lap and there's still opportunity to get a penalty. Into this final chicane, I've got seven tenths of a second to play with, so I don't really need to push too much through here. And I make a bit of a mistake, go a little bit wide there into the final of the four chicanes and you see just how close it gets, but it wasn't any worry because I knew that I could play with a bit of the time there and eventually crossing the line for our third victory in a row. Strangely enough my driver rating on this account is pretty much equal with my main account now. This is my second account. But there we go. Let me know your thoughts on the video. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you'd like to see more of the same and if you did enjoy hit the like button. I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.